Hello, my name is Jerry Kearns. I am applying for the online computer science teaching position. Um, I am interested because I'd like to continue to be able to teach more students computer science. That's really my passion. And, um, and it'd be great to be able to do it and not be confined to the eight to three hours. Um, I think I'm pretty uniquely qualified for this position. I've worked for IBM for eight and a half years. Um, when, I, when I did that, I got an incredible amount of formal and informal training, worked on not only uh, development, but also build and test and design and architecture and worked on a product who, that had been around for 20 years and is still around. And, and so with that comes a certain type of mindset where you have to uh, be careful about not breaking any uh, functionality that people had worked on before, not introduce any new bugs, um, be very careful when introducing new features. And then after that, I went to Intel, and that was kind of the flip side of that coin, where the goal for most projects was to get something out as quickly as possible, be the first to market, if uh, it's kind of a proof of concept. So if it becomes widely accepted, then versions two and three, you get to do the polishing, but, but the immediate thing is to get things out very quickly. Um, after I left Intel, I stayed home with the kids for a few years. That's a, a, a long, great story in and of itself. But then once they were both in elementary school, um, a friend of mine told me that the local high school was looking to hire a um, computer science teacher. And, and as you can imagine, in, uh, there weren't many people qualified to teach computer science. Um, so they hired me with the, with, and, and gave me a transitional license, which allowed me to teach. And then with the understanding that for, uh, that I would be simultaneously pursuing a teaching degree. And so I did do that and got, um, a master of arts in teaching and an Oregon teaching license. So, so I think it's pretty uniquely qualified that almost 20 years professional computing experience and, and, um, and about 15 years of, of teaching computer science with fantastic results. Okay, so now I'm going to shift focus and rather than present to the faculty and staff of um, Laurel Springs. I'm going to uh, shift focus to the customers of Laurel Springs Online School, that is their, the students. So I'm going to be presenting a, a class on arrays and array lists. So welcome back. Um, the goal of this chapter is to learn a new data construct called arrays. Um, here's a definition. We'll be getting into exactly what this means. It says you're going to create and use a new type of data construct that gives you with a single variable um, a large number of items of similar type. Let's see what I mean. So recapping some of the programs that we've gone through before, and of course, feel free to pause the uh, video at any time and bring up your version of this, which might be slightly different, but I'll be showing you a version of each of these. So the first version, we had a program that would read in a number of grades from the keyboard and then average them. And the way that they did this was using, uh, in this case, three distinct variables. 
So the way this program is read is that it initializes three score variables, score one, score two, score three. Each of these are of data type integer, which as you remember is a whole number, a negative or positive or zero, a number with no decimal points. Um, and um, there's an average, which is does take decimal points. And um, so it reads each of the scores into its own unique variable. And then at the end, it prints out the average. So that's great for what it does. The second version of the program that we created was to get around a limitation of the first one. The first one had only three variables. If you wanted to have five variables or eight variables or 10 variables, you don't want to have to create a separate, uh, separate program for each. So let's see how we solve that. So here we have, similarly, we have a variable for score. Now, this time, what we're going to be using the score variable for is every time the person using the program enters a number, it's going to get stored into a variable called score. That's only going to be uh, a temporary variable because it's going to, we're going to take the value of score and add it to the value in the variable total score. Then once that's done, that variable score is available to be reused. So the next time a, a, uh, a test score is, is entered, it's going to be again stored in the variable score and then added to the variable total score. Um, so that's what this does. So it keeps on reusing score and adding to total score until the user enters a negative one. And at that time, it computes the average of all of them and prints out that average. So this, pro this version has no problem with entering five or eight or 20 scores. But what are the limitations of this? Limitations are, the, the, the one limitation you can think of right off is that it doesn't allow you to go back and access any of the individual scores. So why would you want to do that? If your teacher said, we're going to allow you to drop the lowest score or the lowest two scores or the lowest 20% of the scores, with the previous versions of the program, you couldn't do that kind of calculation. Um, so we'd like to get a program that has the best of all three different types of, of these programs. We'd like to be able to have the minimum number of variables that will suffice to create the program in any form that you would like. You'd like to be able to um, have a large, large number of scores, an indeterminate number of, of scores entered. And lastly, you'd be able to you'd like to be able to go back and pick out the individual scores for each one. So we have a new data construct that will allow us to do that third part. It's called an array. So an array is a construct that allows you to keep all of these individual scores, but still just name it by the, the name score. So how do we declare this construct? So there's actually two parts to using an array. There, um, there is a, a variable that we're going to be calling scores. Um, so there is a piece of memory reserved for your variable. So you remember a variable is a, a piece of storage 
reserved by the computer uh, that has a name so that it's easily accessible. So it's, we're, we're going to have two pieces of storage. One is the, uh, the storage for the variable, and the other is the storage for the actual array, the, the storage for the actual data that we're going to um, enter our, all our scores. So to declare it, it's a, you have to, dec you have to, there's two parts to that. First is you have to declare the array variable. Um, so you see that that's done used with uh, the statement int that says that it's, uh, it's going to be integers or whole numbers, left bracket, right bracket, and then the variable name. So this creates a variable called scores that's of a data type that's an array of integers. So remember that doesn't get you the space for the actual values, that just gets you the space for the variable. Next, you have to get the space for the actual, that's going to hold the actual values. And I must have been thinking that when I entered this, because it, it should say that this should initialize the array, but that should now say scores equals new int left bracket 10 right bracket. So let's parse that statement. Um, remember that the equal sign in programming is not the same as the equal sign in algebra, for example. It's more, it's an assignment operator. So, and that is most easily read from right to left. So reading right to left, you see the word new, the keyword new. New is a keyword that will create a brand new chunk of storage for you to use. So new int left bracket 10 bracket will grab a chunk of storage in, in the computer large enough to hold 10 integers. And the assignment operator says to take that and store the address of that into the variable, which should be called scores. Okay, so it's two pieces, declare the variable and declare the actual storage, and then assign the address of the storage to the scores variable. Note, very important, a, a common error, the size of the array cannot be changed once it's declared. Okay, that's one limitation of arrays. It's balanced because it, it performs uh, much, much better than some other constructs that, that try to do a similar thing but allow a variable uh, changing dynamic size of storage. Those other, other um, so for an array, if you wanted to, all of a sudden you ran out of room, you realized you needed to have 20 scores, what you would have to do is to create a second array with the 20 and copy each of the individual ones from the 10 integer array into the 20. Here are two shortcuts for declaring such arrays. Um, one is you can declare all of that on the same line. So you can say int left bracket right bracket scores equals new int left bracket right bracket 10. So that's basically just combining the previous two statements. There are cases where you'd like to, where you would like to, or may need to do it in two separate ones, but oftentimes you just can do it in one statement. A second shortcut is you can not only declare it, but also initialize the values on the same line. If you know what these values are going to, going to be, then reading right to left, in this case, you don't need to use the new upper, operand. It, it can tell by the context that what you're trying to do. So in this case, it's using the left curly brace, 2, comma, 3, comma, 4, comma, comma, 5, right curly brace, semicolon, 
get assign that to an integer array called scores. So it will reserve a chunk of storage holding the integer values 2, 3, 4, and 5, and have the variable scores denoted as a, an integer array, and which points to the storage holding the 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so how do you access each of the items in the array? So each item, you, you can number the, the items in the array. But there's something very unique about programming is rather than the first item being number one, second item being number two, up to number ten, there are reasons why it's easier to number, uh, number items starting at zero. This is very common. You'll see this come up over and over. So the, the number of the item is called the index. The index starts at zero, not one, and it goes up to the size of the array minus one. So that makes sense if you think about it, then rather than go from z 1 to 10, it's going to go from 0 to 10 minus 1, or 9. So there is no index 10. You will probably see in some testing and some code that you do that sometimes you will forget and or, or your, there will be an error in your code and it will say element number 10. And when that happens, you'll get an exception that's it's it says the array index is out of bounds now if you're dealing with a number of of arrays and and you don't know what the size is for each of them or you just don't want to be bothered you can get the size of the array the number of elements in the array using the um, um, method length and the way that you do this is you type in the name of the array dot length and that if you so for example if you said scores dot length that's equivalent to 10. Okay. so like it says on the bottom you can address each of the 10 items in this particular array scores uh, by scores bracket zero bracket up to scores bracket scores dot length, which is 10 minus one. So here's the revised program using an array. Um, we have a temporary variable just called temp. We have total score, we have count, just like we have in the previous ones, we have average. Now, what follows that is the definition of the score um, integer array. So we read the first number of the, the first uh, test score, say, into the variable temp. And we, we say, as long as the temp value is not negative one. Negative one, remember, is called the sentinel value. The sentinel value is a value that's used to, it will terminate this loop. It tells you that we're done. So as long as the temp value is not negative one, we're going to set the individual item in the scores array, denoted by count. Remember, count is zero to start, so score bracket zero equals that temp value. We then add score bracket count to the total score and store that back into total score. So that's keeping the running total score. We then get the next value from the screen and store that into temp. And we add one into count. And we're gonna keep on doing that as long as temp is not equal to negative one. Once it is equal to negative one, we say if the count is not zero, that is, if as long as they didn't try to um, um, 
enter negative one as the first value, then we calculate average to be the, the result of total score divided by count. And, um, yeah, I thought there was an error there, but that looks good. Um, and then we print out the average. So just summarizing, this, this now gives your, your grading program a lot of flexibility and power. You can very simply get a, a large number, indeterminate number of test scores, use a very small number of variables, and later on you can um, search through the array, array which we'll be discussing at a later point, and, for example, find the lowest score or the lowest number of scores and subtract those from the total score and calculate a new average. Thanks very much. See you next time on Arrays Part 2.